Hey folks, Chris Vandeviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. And today I wanna to dissect the difference between destructive and non-destructive audio editing. This is a question that's cropped up a few times with different readers, and I think that the mystery of what these things mean is pretty intriguing when you don't know what it is. But by the end of this video, I think you'll come to the same conclusion that I have, which is it's not really worth worrying about. But let me show you, let me dissect this for you. So what is the difference? What is destructive audio editing? What is non-destructive audio editing? In Logic here, you have an audio region. And the audio region, if you look in the finder, refers to an audio file. And the audio file is, in this case, it's just in the finder. Usually it's in your audio file folder in your Logic project. So this region just refers to the audio file, if I change this region at all, if I chop that out, I don't ever actually permanently change the audio file itself. I just change these references and it develops more references over time the more I chop and edit. But I never impact the audio file itself. So the changes that I make on this audio file in this project is only in this project. If I import this audio file into a new project, it'll start out clean, no edits, no breaks, no nothing. Destructive audio editing, however, impacts the audio file itself. You permanently change the audio file. And that's the essence of what this is all about. I think the best question you can ask yourself if you're deciding between destructive or non-destructive editing is, is the task that I'm having to do right now annoying enough that I don't ever want to repeat this task in the future? In the case of, say, a badly edited drum track where there's pops and clicks because the edits were made in the middle of the transient or something, that to me is an edit worth permanently changing so I don't ever have to worry about it again. If I have to import this drum track in the future, uh... I don't know if the client asked me to remix this song. I don't want to be bothered doing this again. But then again, you could also say I make this edit. And I'm like, okay, those edits are perfect. You can just bounce in place. You can hit okay. And for some reason it did that. <laughs> but nonetheless, if I select these and I bounce in place, what happens is, is it creates a new audio file. It makes a copy. And once again, I don't have to permanently change the original audio file. And that's always my preference. I always make copies because I don't ever want to be in a position where I'm like, crap, I can't go back and change the thing that I just did. Which is the case with destructive audio editing. Let's dig into the audio file editor here. So the audio file editor, this is the place using key command E this is the place where you change your audio file permanently. So say there are pops and clicks, say there are breaths and you just don't wanna be bothered with them, you can change them and it will impact the audio file here and here at the top here and it'll be forever changed. So there's a few functions you can use here in the audio file editor under functions and we'll dig into each of these a little bit. So there's normalize, change gain, fade in, fade out, silence, invert, reverse, trim, and remove DC offset. So normalize. Normalization is something that if you look on any audio blog, 99.9% .9 of people are gonna tell you, don't use this, don't use this function. Why? Because it takes the audio here and it figures out where the loudest peak is and it expands the volume to zero dB. So it's maxed out. Let me show you. And now it's at the loudest point it can be, which is zero dB based on the loudest peak. I mean, it's just unnecessary. You definitely want to, don't want to do this to your masters or mixes. You don't want to normalize because it leaves no room for further processing. It just, it just seems unnecessary. I wouldn't bother with it. And you can make selections just by clicking and dragging across the audio file to perform these procedures. So from there, you have change game, which is essentially the same thing, except you get to set the volume in the change. So let's change it, boom. And you can go beyond zero dB, kind of. 
Once again, that seems like an unnecessary thing to me because you can just go to the inspector here and you can adjust the gain and you can see what you're doing and you're not permanently altering the audio file. Functions, fade in and fade out is exactly what it sounds like. You are adding a fade in or fade out. And let's do that, boom. But again, you have more control and opportunity and less opportunity to do damage to your audio file by just using the fade in and fade out in the inspector here. We have silence. So say there is some sort of mouth noise or something that you don't like, you can silence it. Boom. Invert inverts the phase of the file. Reverse reverses the file. Once again, you can do this non-destructively with the inspector by just clicking on the reverse tab. Trim. So you can trim the audio file. Watch this. And now the audio that was up here is gone. And then remove DC offset, which DC is information that's hanging out at around zero hertz. If you've ever recorded a raw bass track and then you hit spacebar to play and hear the bass track and hit spacebar to stop and you hear a pop or a click in your monitors or your headphones, that's DC. There's audio hanging out around zero hertz. Let's look at the channel EQ here. See, the channel EQ doesn't even show you below 20 hertz. But your speakers are essentially stuck in limbo. It doesn't know which direction to move because zero is just, you know, it's zero. It's the bottom. So when you hit playback and stop, they pop and click because they don't know which direction to move in. So you can use remove DC offset to remove DC or you can just use a high pass filter at 20 or 30 hertz or the adaptive limiter has this handy remove DC offset. So once again, I don't see a reason to alter your audio file permanently for any particular reason. There's one other thing to take into consideration when it comes to editing destructively. Let's go into editing, excuse me, audio file editor under the preferences, the audio tab, number of undo steps. You have a very limited amount of undo steps available to you with the audio file editor. Of course, you can increase it, but the more you increase it, the more CPU the audio file editor is using to remember these steps because these are, these are heavy-handed steps. If you've done a lot of destructive editing, you only have so many undo steps. And once you've gone as far back as you can go based on how many have been set here, you're stuck. You're stuck with your changes forever. If you quit logic before undoing, you are stuck forever with the changes that you've made. So as you can see, you can just create fades on the region without impacting your audio file. You can change the gain if you want. You can chop and cut and move. Like you can do everything that the audio file editor allows you to do without ever actually permanently changing your audio file. So again, the question you need to ask yourself is, is this task annoying enough that I don't ever want to do this ever again in the future? It should be th that heavy of a question. Otherwise, just change it within the arrange page. Just use the functions within the inspector, the plugins, and you know, just don't make the mistakes that I've made in the past, which is, crap, I can't ever change this ever again. So I hope that was helpful to you. If it was, I highly, highly, highly suggest that you subscribe to this channel or to the blog. The link is down below. I post new videos and blog posts every week, and it's all designed to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thank you so much.